Hello aspiring hackers, my name is Pablo aka Hacker Mentor and today I'm here with a video and I'm going to be answering one of the most common questions I've gotten on my Mr. Robot tutorial and if you haven't seen that one you can check it out somewhere on screen um, but I've gotten the question how do you get the IP address quite a lot and it was actually quite interesting for me to see that question pop up because that question is actually one of the most fundamental things that you need to know about hacking is how do IP addresses work. So in order to become a good hacker, you need to have a basis in computer networking and maybe know a little bit of programming. You don't need to be the best programmer ever, but you just need to be able to understand how code works. Um, so in a nutshell, it's, it's kind of interesting to see this question, but I'm going to do my best to um, yeah, explain it to you as uh, clearly as possible in this video. But before we get to that, uh, let's roll the intro. Have you ever wondered what life looks like through the eyes of a computer hacker? Have you ever wanted to learn the skill sets to hack just about anything? My name is Pablo and I've acquired these skills. As an ethical hacker, I hack just about anything I can find. Allow me to take you on a journey through the world of cybersecurity to teach you everything it takes to become a successful computer hacker. Ready? Let's go! Alright, so most of you guys have been getting into Vulnhub boxes and I know because my Mr. Robot uh, video is basically the most watched video on my channel which just signals to me that you guys like doing hacking labs, uh, which I absolutely support. It's one of the best ways to get really good at hacking, which is just practicing it. Um, you're not gonna get good without practice. This, this, that just, this is just how it works, right? Um, but today I'm going to show you how you can actually find an IP address, what the theory is behind it, um, and so on and so forth. So um, before we get started, I actually want to talk about what is an IP address. Uh, because we of course know that uh, every computer has an IP address and every internet connection also has an IP address. But what's the difference? Well, there is something called a public network, which is basically if you go to whatismyip.com or whatever website you have, uh, is going to show you your public IP, which means that if you connect to Facebook, that's probably the IP address that Facebook's going to see, which is your public IP. But because you have multiple devices on your network, let's say uh, I have my phone, which is just uh, ringing, but I have my phone, I have my computer, I have a laptop, I have all sorts of devices, I have a smart TV, stuff like that. Every single one of these devices also needs an IP address. And in order to fix that, we basically have something called private IP addresses. And uh, the technology that works behind that is NAT, which stands for Network address translation. Um, I'm explaining more about uh, NAT and networking in uh, my course, of course. Um, but that's the basics. That's all you need to know for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to use VirtualBox, uh, which is basically the well VM software that we use to do our VulnHub boxes. Um, to create a virtual NAT network. So we're basically going to create a network inside of our computer virtually. So first of all, I want to show you um, the different settings that you can have when it comes to networking in your VMs. So as you can see, I have a bunch of VMs here. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, Kali Linuxes that I use for uh, my coaching and also a bunch of VulnHub boxes uh, that I sometimes do together with my students. But um, if we go to a random one, let's pick Kali Linux here, uh, and we go to network, you can see that you have four adapters at your disposal. Basically an adapter is like a network card. It's like a virtual network card um, on your computer or on your VM in this case. Um, we can enable and disable uh, a bunch of adapters. Usually what I do is I put it on that. So that way it's completely separated from the rest of my network. Um, but for my Kali, I also like to have the option to have a bridged adapter, which I enable and disable sometimes. But basically what this does is it routes the connection through uh, your physical connection. So here you actually um, select your network card. So mine is set to my Ethernet connection. 
If I wanted to share my wireless, I would actually pick this one. Um, but basically this would simulate it as, as if the VM was plugged in physically to your router. And that also means that it's going to be on the same network as all the rest of your devices, which of course I don't recommend because that means that you're getting a virtual box that you've downloaded from the internet. You don't know what's running on it. And then you're just letting it go inside of your network. Not the best idea. However, what you should do is uh, you should create a virtual network inside of uh, virtual box, a virtual net network, which is exactly what we're going to do. Because what we can do then is we can take both our attacker box, which is going to be Kali Linux, and our uh, victim box, which is going to be whatever uh, box that you've downloaded from the internet, and we're going to link them together. So first we want to go to file and then check uh, tools, network manager. And then you want to navigate to net networks because probably you're going to land here, but you actually want to go to net networks. Uh, as you can see, I have a bunch of them here already. Uh, don't worry about it. Your list is probably going to be empty. Uh, but you want to do is you want to create a new one, which is just going to create a, uh, a new network called net network, which we still need to configure. Um, you click properties and properties should pop up over here. Now I'm going to give this a name. So I'm going to say Vuln Hub Network. And then of course you want to give it a range. So um, if you're not familiar with IP ranges, I do recommend that you uh, study up on that because it's very important in hacking. If uh, you don't want to bother with that and just skip to the hacking right away, just follow what I do and it will just magically work. Um, so I'm going to say 192.168. dot and now I can pick a random number. And because I'm a meme lord, I'm going to say 69. Haha, <laughs> the funny number. Um, dot zero slash 24, which should be big enough of a network. We're going to enable DHCP. Uh, we don't need any port forwarding. Uh, so we're actually good just like that. I'm going to hit apply. And now my new phone hub network is over here. So what do I want to do now? I want to go to my attacker box. First of all, I want to click settings and I want to go back to my network settings. And here when, uh, where it says adapter one, I'm going to choose NAT network. Beware though, because there is NAT and there is NAT network. They are both very similar, but the one that we actually want is NAT network because that gives us more control over uh, what happens. So uh, I'm going to go to VulnHub network, which is the network I've just created. And all I need to do now is click OK. So I've done that. This basically means that my Kali Linux box is now inside of that virtual network. Now I also want to go to uh, my VulnHub box. Let's pick a random one again. Let's take Kyoptrix, for example. I want to go to settings. I want to go to network. And here I want to choose Net network and VulnHub network, just like that, and click OK. Now, do beware though, because some boxes will actually uh, tell you, but you need to check the VulnHub page. Uh, I cannot tell you for each and every box, but some uh, have a fixed IP and they need to be within a certain range. So, what you can do then is you just look up uh, what kind of range it is. So let's let's say that uh, the Vulnhub box you downloaded has the fixed IP of 10.100.100.100. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to get that IP. You're going to copy it or cut it in my case, and you're going to paste it in the IPv4 prefix. You're going to take the last number, change that with a zero, and then do slash 24. If you do that, you're probably going to be safe. Uh, and then you just enable DHCP and then your computer will magically do the rest. Um, again, if you want the theory behind this, um, I'll leave that for another video. If you're interested in it, just let me know in the comments, then I can uh, definitely make a video about that. But uh, for now, I just want to get you guys as quickly up to speed as possible. So once you've done that, uh, basically these two boxes are in the same network. Um, now, I'm not going to take the time to boot my Kali Linux here, but I'm going to show you inside of my Windows what you need to do then. 
So um, before, as you remember, we uh, actually set the network to 192.168.69.0 slash 24. This is our range. So this means that every single computer that we put in that network is gonna have an IP address that starts with this and is gonna go from one all the way to 254, right? So um, knowing this, we need to of course know which one is our attacker box and which one is our victim. Now, um, if you are in your Kali Linux, you open up a terminal. Basically what you wanna do is you wanna uh, type in ifconfig and that will give you the IP address of your Kali Linux box. Um, I'm gonna do the same for my uh, network here, ipconfig. And as you can see, if I scroll up here, my ethernet adapter, this is my IP address internally, of course, my internal IP address. Um, now let's say, I'm gonna clear this. Let's say that I wanna get to know what the IP address is of the victim and it's not showing anything on screen. Of course, we need to hack it. So we don't know anything at this point. Uh, the trusty tool that we can use is Nmap. So when we use Nmap, it's basically a command line tool that is built into Kali Linux already, uh, which will let you scan a network. And once we do that, we just need to say nmap and then just give it uh, the range that we want to scan, which was 69, zero slash 24. This should be enough. Um, I mean, there is a lot of, there's a lot of things that you can do with nmap, but if it's just to find the IP address of the target box, then this command should be enough. Once you do that, it will show up, um, Couple, well, it will show you a couple of IP addresses. Um, and then, yeah, basically you need to check which one has the correct uh, name of the box that you've downloaded and yeah, the IP will just show. So I hope that answered your question. Um, if you wanna see more like this, if uh, there's anything that you wanna see when it comes to cybersecurity or hacking, uh, please do tell me in the comments because I'm actually looking for a lot of new ideas uh, as to what kind of content you guys want to see because there's a lot of things I can do But I'm not entirely sure what you guys enjoy. So let me know. Uh, let's have a conversation and um, Yeah, other than that if you want to learn more about networking, I'm also going to put my website uh, down below um, What I do is I have a couple of courses and I have one mentoring program uh, Where I teach people how to hack basically and everything around hacking so if that's something that you find interesting and you want to have some more streamlined content uh, rather than the stuff that I put on YouTube, which is just random videos here and there, you can go check that out and um, I hope to see you there. So without further ado, uh, this was it for today and I hope to see you guys in the next video.